That's a purry tink. I was going to record a video tink, and you're just going to get your cat hair all over me. Can I record a video? There's a camera. There's a light that's blinking too much. Do we need to replace that bulb? Yeah, maybe we do. We don't like blinky lights. Yeah, they make kitties look weird. What is there? A line right there. Like a line. What's that about? Oh, the line goes away when I take my glasses on? Kitty! Oh my god! So what am I playing this week? Let's start with what I have finished. So uh, I have finished one thing. Um, I finished Earth Knight on the Nintendo Switch. Um, just to remind everybody what this is, uh, this is an infinite runner, kind of similar to uh, the games like Bit Trip Runner. If you played Bit Trip Runner, if you played that, um, <clears throat> and the basic premise is that you are running along the backs of dragons, collecting items that you use to unlock things. It's like the it's like the currency. Uh, and you're running along the back of the dragon, you have to survive until you reach the head, and then once you reach the head, you stab, stab, stab the head, and uh, the dragon falls, and then you continue, and you go on to the next dragon, and the next dragon, the next dragon, until you get to the final dragon, and you beat that dragon up. Um, it's, a, it's fun, I finished it. Um, Honestly, it uh, it was really fun. Um, I you know I, I if you're somebody who does like uh, infinite runners, um, then not infinite runners. That's not what this is. Uh, auto runners. That's what this is. Uh, if you're somebody who likes auto runners, then I, I do recommend this pretty highly. It's a great game. Um, if you don't like auto runners, if Bit Trip Hero and those types of games are not your jam. This game isn't going to convince you that the, the, the genre is worthwhile. Uh, but if you do like them, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's also great because uh, it's a pretty short game. I know some people would be like, oh, I don't want a short game. But no, I, I really love short games. I have, I have too many games for every game to be 50 to 100 hours. Um, so the fact that I finished this in, realistically, I think it was under 8 hours. The fact that I finished this in under eight hours is, is pretty huge. It's great. It was short, it was sweet, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't 100% it, you know, obviously you could go back and, and uh, grind the levels and um, collect all of the, the currency to unlock all of the stuff, and I didn't unlock all of the stuff. But I did play through to the end, I unlocked a fair number of things, uh, and I, I beat the final boss, and I got the end credits, and it was fun. I enjoyed it. It also has some great accessibility options, which is another thing. I mean, I'm a big fan of games that, you know, can make themselves more accessible to people. Um, Celeste was like that. It was, you know, really great hardcore platformer that had a lot of accessibility options, so if you aren't somebody who can do hardcore platformers, you can enjoy it. This has decent accessibility options. Um, but it is. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, if I had any complaints, um, I kind of have two complaints, and both of them are kind of, they're kind of Switch related. Um, the first complaint is that the load times are obscene. Um, and I mean, I realize this is on the Switch, maybe the load times wouldn't be a problem if you were on something with a, a faster hard drive, something like a, you know, a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox with their M2 drives or maybe PC, this wouldn't be an issue, but on the Switch, the load times were insane. I mean, there were frequently situations where 
uh, you know, a load time could be upwards of like 30 seconds to 40 seconds. Um, and then the, the level was only like a, a minute long. So it really kind of sucks to spend like half of your time in load screens. And I mean, it's maybe I'm exaggerating, maybe it wasn't that long, but that's certainly what it felt like. Um, so the load time was a little bit insane. The other complaint that I do have, um, it had a lot of slowdown. And again, this might be like a Switch specific issue, maybe if you're on a platform with more hardware, power, or prowess, the slowdown wouldn't be an issue. But on the Switch, it had a lot of slowdown. And the thing is, it's not like the game is doing more than other 2D platformers that I have played have. Uh, you know, it's not like there's there's more sprites on screen or more uh, intense graphical effects that you can't find elsewhere. And those other games that have more intense effects are able to hit a, a pretty solid 60 FPS. So the fact that Earth Knight really struggled to hit 60 FPS is kind of a, a problem. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that even though it might be uh, worse on the Switch, the performance is probably more due to the game not being very well optimized. Um, but aside from those two complaints, it's incredibly fun. It's a short but sweet experience. It does have additional replayability if you really want to dive more into it. But um, it's fun, and uh, I enjoyed it. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, all right, so what am I still playing? Well, um, still playing Resident Evil 4. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't finished it. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun, and it's Resident Evil 4. What? I don't really have to. I don't have to sell this to anybody. You, you know what it is. It's a big AAA title. Um, I don't need to sell it to you. Uh, but I'm enjoying it. It's graphically just really impressive, really amazing. Um, uh, it's it's so good. It's just so good. Um, I think... Uh, where am I? I think last night I finished the, the minecart sequence. And I'm at the section after the minecarts. But I don't remember... I don't remember exactly where I left off. Um, I have no idea what chapter I'm on. It's... I haven't really been paying attention to the chapter numbers. I pay more attention to the action in the game. Um, but I do know that I finished the minecart sequence yesterday. Um, and I'm enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun. It's very fun. I'm enjoying it. Uh, Resident Evil 4. It's a blast. Uh, I've also, of course, still been playing Grim Fandango. I think if I were to just really sit down and play Grim Fandango, uh, like, solidly and didn't interrupt, didn't switch to something else, uh, I would be done. But truthfully, I, I sit down and I play Grim Fandango for maybe an hour a week at this point, which means that it's going to take a while for me to finish it. Um, but I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Um... Maybe I'll force myself, sit down and force myself to finish it. Because um, I, I do have two other uh, Lucasfilm remasters that I want to play. The, the Double Fine Studio remasters. I really do need to go and finish this and start those, but I haven't. Um, uh, I'm also still playing the Team 17 uh, collection on Evercade specifically. I am still playing Alien Breed 2. Um, <clears throat> I have to be honest, I'm kind of hitting a wall of enjoyment. Um, it's not like the difficulty is spiked or anything like that. I'm, it's still just as, di just as same difficulty as the previous title. Um, I just, I'm kind of feeling done. So I might not finish two <laughs> and I might not start three. Uh, so this might be the last week I talk about this. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see if I can push through and still enjoy it for one more week. Um, the thing is, is there's other games on here that are fun, so this might be something that I take on the road and just, you know, slowly whittle away at the Alien Breed games. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I also, uh, still playing 2K Drive. Lego 2K Drive, I should say. Lego 2K Drive. 2K Drive Lego? I'm still playing it, whatever it is. Uh, I've been playing with my daughter quite a bit, having a lot of fun. Uh, we actually sat down and, and, and actually I, I say we, she sat down and played the single player game a little bit and messed around in the open world area. Uh, I have only ever really played it 
versus with her. She's the one who's played the single player one so far. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's a freaking blast. Uh, I will say that one of the complaints I had last time was that for a LEGO game there really wasn't much destruction. That seems to be in, in two-player split-screen. It seems like in split-screen they, they dial down the destruction, which is probably like a, a performance thing. They want to hit that solid, you know, 60 FPS, and they really probably couldn't do it if both sides of the screen had massive Lego particle effects happening everywhere. But when you play it in the single-player game, there's there's quite a bit of destruction. So, I guess I understand why. <laughs> I understand the me mechanically the why, uh, you know, why it's not more. Lego pieces on the on the racetrack in the the multiplayer versus, um, but I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're into Mario Kart style games and you have someone to play with locally, this is great. Great couch co-op on the PlayStation Five. It's a lot of fun. Not co-op, couch versus couch multiplayer. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's a lot of fun with my daughter. Um, all right. So what else am I playing? The other ones are all digital, um, so they're all things that I have been playing on Steam, on PC. Uh, first is, I still, I'm still playing Renfield. Um, you know, Renfield is a little vampire survivors-like clone based upon the Renfield movie. Oh, by the way, uh, my wife and I just saw the Renfield movie. I played the game, but we hadn't actually seen the movie before this last weekend. My wife came home and... Uh, we, we sort of got a new TV and she came home with a Blu-ray of Renfeld and she's like, let's watch it this weekend. And we watched it. It was a lot of fun. And it's kind of funny because as I was watching the movie, I started understanding all the references in the game. Like, uh, in the game, the, the currency are little bugs that kind of crawl towards you or crawl across the screen and you want to eat the bugs. Now that I've seen the movie, I totally get why it's bugs. I, I had no clue. I did not know that the bugs gave him powers. Uh, anyway, I'm playing it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I kind of feel like I have reached, uh, I have completed, aside from a couple of little trophies that are more grindy, I kind of feel like I've done everything that is currently available. But it is in early access, so they will probably update it and add more things. Um, I'm very confident that Mega Cat Studios, the, the, the people behind it, will, you know, make the game better better as it as time goes on but what's there right now is fun i just feel like i have probably seen it all um and i certainly have unlocked everything that's currently available uh but i am i'm enjoying the renfield game and i do recommend it very highly if you are somebody who likes vampire survivors if you're into that type of game go check out renfield i know there's a lot of vampire survivors clones out there but renfield really is something special um, what's the other new game? The other new game is, of course, another Vampire Survivors clone. Because I'm a friggin' addict. Um, it's Halls of Torment. Uh, which I think might also be an early access. I don't remember. Uh, Halls of Torment, it came out, I think, in May? So, it's really only a couple months old, but it, uh, for whatever reason, it really wasn't on my radar until, like, about a week ago, when I saw it on Steam. Um, and it is. It's another Vampire Survivors-like like game, which we got to come up with a better, you know, every time there's a thing where it's like, oh, hey, this is like these other games. Yeah, that becomes like the genre, but then people, re they, they don't like that. They want to come up with a better title. It's like back in the 90s, all of the first-person shooters were, were called Doom clones. But eventually, Doom clone went away, and now they're just first-person shooters. And in fact, in, in the first-person shooter genre, there's a lot of sub-genres. Dark Souls is starting to do that as well. You'll, you'll see a lot of games, they call it, oh, it's a Souls-like. But a lot of people are resistant to that. And now you're seeing new kind of uh, uh, terminology come to describe Souls-like. You'll see a lot of people call them action RPGs. Which I have to be honest, I don't like that term because action RPG had a meaning before Souls-like, and it, it does include Souls-likes, but it includes a lot of other things. I think we need a better term, uh, but I would, I would argue that right now we are really needing a new term for Vampire Survivors clones, because we have a lot of them, and they need their own genre. Anyway, 
Halls of Torment is another one. It's another new one. Um, the things that set it apart, there's kind of two things in my mind that set it apart. Um, <clears throat> the first thing is that it seems to have more of an emphasis on close quarter combat. You know, uh, vampire survivors. There's a few weapons that are close quarter, but for the most part, a lot of the stuff gets really big and like screen filling. I am yet to find anything in Halls of Torment that, that I would describe as screen, screen filling. So it, you kind of have to be more methodical in your action. Um, and I'd say the second thing that kind of sets it apart is that aesthetically, it looks more like Diablo. It looks like Diablo 2 to me. Um, and I, I really do get like a Diablo vibe playing it, even though it really doesn't have anything gameplay wise to do with Diablo. It's really just the aesthetic of it, but that is enough to really give me like a Diablo 2 vibe to it. And I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's been a blast. I've been enjoying it a great deal. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I hear my wife wandering around upstairs. So I'm going to say goodbye. Go spend time with my wife. Because I love her. So there. Alright, goodbye.